You can see me this weekend going to my favorite place, Florida. You know you're my people. You know you're my people. I'm going to Dania Beach, Florida, the Improv Comedy Club this weekend, May 12th through the 14th. Then I'm going to be the following weekend in Omaha, Nebraska at the Funny Bone, the 20th through the 21st. St. Louis, Funny Bone, uh, June 3rd and 4th. Houston, Texas, June 10th and 12th. I'm going to be doing a local show at Flappers. We're going to sell that out on June 18th. Um, West Nyack, New York, June 24th through 25th, Austin, Texas, August 4th through 6th, Springfield, Missouri, August 19th through 20th, Pittsburgh, Tempe, Caluso, California, Kansas City, Missouri, Irvine, a lot more. Just go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. And you guys, next week I will be in Minneapolis and Chicago. I can't wait to come back to the Midwest. These tickets will sell out. Please get them at esteronice.com. And I'm also coming to Denver and Austin is rescheduled and DC is rescheduled. I'll see you guys there. Oh, is this our show? Are we doing the show? Starting with mouth guards today. I, I went to a TMJ doctor. And he gave me a mouth guard. I have a day mouth guard and a night mouth guard. Welcome to the dark side. Well, <laughs> I, I actually don't hot. I don't have a dark side. I don't have a mouth guard. I just have the energy of someone that would. You, I mean, scream mouth guard. Uh, yes, thank you. You spittle like you have a mouth guard in? But my mouth guard made my grinding worse. But I'm assuming you have a it's different... It's not that tight. Yeah. yeah, it's like... But the... the I don't have that yet. They they did the thing where they mold your teeth and everything. I wish that I would have gone that route instead. I made what I thought was a questionable decision during the time. And now I'm thinking it was a poor decision overall. Was Remember we talked about getting the Botox, Botox you did for the it? TMJ? What a fucking mistake for me. For you me. got it? For me, yes. What? I never told you that. You, you kind of look like you got it. What? Your face is a little. I didn't get it recently. When did you a while it? back. Did it help? Do we need it? No. It helped with it. the pain because it didn't allow me to clench, but it changed the shape of my face so badly that I lost the... I like my face being plump and fat and round. Like yeah. that's what I... Yeah, now I, you look like a hollow cheek skeleton no bitch. i don't have it anymore it's been you like a like year shit, wow. <laughs> uh, dang. <laughs> though but it made me like exactly that it made me kind of hollowed out and i maybe that's the, the appearance some girls like i don't like it for myself and it compromised my smile like i love how big my mouth is i don't want to we all minimize. do <laughs> carlos please look into my eyes i love how big my this mouth narrative is. of you and carlos makes me so uncomfortable <laughs> wait tell me why because I have my theories of Carlos. And, no, no, no. no. Um, I think it's funny, but I, I, I just can't see it. <laughs> Let's I prove her wrong, it. Carlos. There is like actually there is a new Russian TV show where you have to guess which one of the guys on the show is gay. They stole from us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all just you lined up though. <laughs> <laughs> one in a wig, one without a wig. There's a lot of controversy around it because they're calling it homophobic. But if they're right on who's gay, they get $28,000. Oh, I'd be rich. <laughs> 2 million rubles. It's not a lot in America. But yeah, there I, is I that. would lose this show. I, I've only like solely dated gay guys, I think. But you can also life. like, who knows if they're gay? You can seem gay and not be gay. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely a homophobic yeah. concept for sure. That said... <laughs> I want to be a contestant on it. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, pitch you. If you're gay and you pull off being straight, do you win money? Yeah. <laughs> you should. I. It is considered, yeah, ultra homophobic, and the producer behind it was also okay. in the government. Oh, okay. And oh, really? Behind, That's yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so wait. it's like state-run anti-gay TV. Yeah, wait, in Russia. Isn't, isn't Russia anti-gay? Like, yeah, they're not very good to the gays. Or and you, the show is called I'm Not Gay, where male contestants just compete to prove how not gay they are. That, that is, is sad. so sad. That's, That's sad. what I have to do every week here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always on this show. <laughs> I don't think I'm good at you it. You like though. the attention. <laughs> you love it, Carlos. Hey, let me tell Wait. you something, Carlos. I'm a proponent for your anti gayness, okay? Thank you. Yeah, I feel like I serve the other side. I Thank want you. you to, you definitely serve it. Um, <laughs> I want you to be yourself. Okay. Well, I am myself, and <laughs> okay. you still call me gay. Okay. I just think you'd be more yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, 
But okay, wait, Carlos, I wanted to tell you something. So I, it was my, my friend Club Soda Kenny, who is like this, uh, he's the security guard for Jim Norton. And I think he works with Bill Burr and Madonna and Amy Schumer and stuff. Excuse he's really me? cool. He's this big, mm-hmm. amazing man, Club Soda Kenny. But it was mm-hmm. his birthday the other day. And I had a picture of him deep throating a banana from when I used to open for Jim Norton. And I wanted to post it for his birthday, but I knew it was in the beginning of my Instagram. So I scrolled back and I scrolled back and I went through my entire Instagram and it's so good. You guys, please go through my, I mean, hilarious <laughs> since day one. But you know what I noticed? One of the, I, in the beginning, I, you know, I didn't have that many likes. I didn't have that many followers. Guess who was one of my likes? Who? Carlos. Ooh. Loyal. He's been my friend for a long time. Yeah. So anyone that wants to hate, we've had, we have a dynamic, okay? There you go. I feel like you're not even just reminding the audience, you're reminding yourself. Like, I feel like you forgot. <laughs> I was like, oh, we've been friends for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, things got weird since I stole the Brody, Brody shirt, and the Brody sweatshirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you imagine that? <laughs> now, I like, you know, I can probably clean that. I can figure that out, that sweatshirt out for you. Annie, it's are like, we um, <laughs> post egg extraction? Put, they scooped me out. I feel scooped. Do you really? Do you ever feel, yes, I feel terrible. Do you ever feel like, have you ever imagined what it's like to be the ice cream container after this? You just think of the scoop, right? Yeah. Oh, I've been scooped. You really feel? I feel scooped. No way. I feel scooped. What does it, it, do you feel It's not, it feels like, it feels like cramps, ab workout, and something else. Some scoop, a scoop, a scooping. But you're done now, right? Like now you're on the way up. Yeah, it's all done. The eggs are being well. I did decide to. We decided to make embryos, which is like if Roe versus Wade gets turned over and they make me make all them, like if they're like, you have to have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have the best reality Wait, show. Wait, we'll ever. carry some as six yes. for Esther, six for me. Yeah, yeah. No, we're dividing those eggs up. Yeah, you got. <laughs> I feel like you got a lot of eggs. Why well, 24 eggs? Then uh, the 14 were like mature. Then they fertilized 12. So then they're gonna see how many from that. They're gonna send. I feel like I'm scared of your eggs. Like they're gonna bully me. (laughs) So you're a little horny. (laughs) You love being bullied by me. Don't play this game. (laughs) But like the eggs, it's like a whole new thing. Are you horny for Annie's eggs? I'm down. I'm hungry for her eggs. Oh my god! Should we cook the extra ones up? Yeah. You know how just eggs comes frozen. (laughs) (laughs) But it is like I'm like, don't worry about abortion. You should be attacking me. This is crazy. What did I just do? Oh, you're like feeling like you're drunk with scientific powers. It's very weird. Well, you've been harvested. I've been, it feels strange. It does yeah. feel weird. I, I feel empty and very full at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so full. I went to an acupuncturist today and I felt like she, when she put the needles in, like air was just going to shoot out. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly so jealous that you got that done. Like, that now you know you have them they're out yeah. and you don't have to, even though i've always said that i don't ever i've i've given you controversial advice yeah. i feel like our whole friendship i've always said that you don't need to freeze your eggs because your eggs are always going to be fine and i feel validated because you got so many eggs i will say that you, you can't really take the advice from a younger person that has not frozen <laughs> their eggs from that but the reason that i okay and i did like those I did like when people said that to me. Like, I loved when people were like, you shouldn't have to freeze your eggs. And I'm like, oh, great. Okay, you're right. I'm but just going to like. insurance policy. Respect. But the thing is that I would then, once I started thinking about it, you know, when you get like a Camry, you see Camrys everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like once I started being like, you know what? I'm not going to freeze my eggs. Every 42 year old to 47 year old bitch that can't get pregnant just approached me and told me to freeze my eggs. I mm. swear to God, everywhere I'd go, someone would go, just do it. I wish I did it. Really? I swear. But I think it's just, it depends on the person. It's just like, who is it? And then the whole reason I decided to do this was because after I got vaccinated, I, I went and got like a, a blood test and they checked my FSH score and mm. it was just way lower than it had been right before I got the vaccine, which I later found out was because they tested me at the wrong time, time in my cycle. cycle. Yeah. But I freaked out and just that freak out made me realize like, I do want to have kids and I do want to like have the options. Yeah. So then. I'm glad I did it. It was Dr. Wong was amazing, um, but it was definitely a lot. I was like stabbing myself with hormones every day. How many days did you have to um, do the stabbings? I think it was 10 days. Oh. I don't even know. I all blended in. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like, I guess in the long run, it wasn't that long. And it's not like that bad. Like I'm here, I'm fine. And it's for a better cause. And I'm glad that I was finally able to have enough money to do it. Mm, give but. me your belly. It's so full. Sana, sana, colita de rana. 
sauna sauna that's what Sweat my mexican friends always say when i have a herida an injury licks just colita de ranas is like i think it's like the tail of a frog so it's some type of <laughs> oh. positive Ooh. curse i do, put on you do mine <laughs> do my vagina it hurts <laughs> and also is the tail of a frog <laughs> Does it go inside it? <laughs> the tail and enters it? <laughs> I So did you guys see the news about how Roe v. Wade is like supposedly going to be overturned? Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I got like a few DMs from people that are like, why haven't you spoken up about Roe v. Wade? I'm like... Turn your DMs off, bitch. You I have know. to turn these DMs I'm like, off. What Who are do these you people? I think my stance is on. I'm like a. I, I don't know. I just. You're like, like I'm a row. <laughs> <laughs> You're fish row. I had an abortion last year. I, that one was not by choice. But I know, but would you have not been able, allowed that's to That's what have I'm a, wondering. Ooh. It's so sketchy that they want to overturn it. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I that's think dark. in California, you would have been fine. Yes. Oh, oh that's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. And in Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like I, you know uh, where to live. I get the same messages as you, and I'm like, have I not spent the last decade talking about my own abortions? I don't know what else you want me to say. That's why they're overturning like, it, bitch. It's your fault. You gotta be <laughs> quiet about this. Stop shouting your abortions, bitches. Let's pretend we don't get them. <laughs> well, I also get, I don't, I personally don't love like the social media influx of like, donate to this, donate to this. And that's me, that's my trigger because I, growing up, like I did not grow up with money. And so whenever I saw like celebrities posting about where to donate, I was always like, fuck you, you're rich. Like you donate. I see some holes in the story. Why? Where were these celebrities posting when you were little? <laughs> no, like literally like they would put videos out. Oh, right. trust me. Maybe I wasn't little, but a hundred percent donate. You've always been little. You're like, right. no, I just mean how I am now. <laughs> it was last week. <laughs> what do you mean? I was just like, are you trying to play it off like you're 17 right now? <laughs> like Dave little. accuses me of that all the time because we were talking about that show Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip because I made a TikTok about it and um, I was like I Dave was like I, I watched that show I'm like I remember when it came out I was really little I was like I was a kid and then we looked it up and I was fully like 18 <laughs> is that the one with Matthew Perry yes. yeah okay mm -hmm. oh Matthew Perry Matthew Perry but yeah like side note obviously we're pro-abortion <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're pro-choice. We're oh. not like, go get an abortion. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> but I'm very, you know, careful about, I mean, in the, I learned my lesson. Like, in the past, I've always just been like, around Trisha Paytas, even the first time we had her on Tiger Belly, I openly talked about my abortion, like fully assuming that she would like be on board. And I didn't take into consideration that she was having a difficult time at that time with trying to get pregnant and like conceive. So like, I was like, Oh, That's shit. Storyline from Party of Five, by the way. Oh, is it? I love Jennifer, Party of Five. Jennifer Love Hewitt was adopted. Yeah. And Nev, Nev Campbell got an abortion. Yeah. And she was like, but I would have been in an abortion. And she like ran and cried into her. Oh, God. That is a very. Now, I, did you try to get an abortion and then the Christians came and tore your shirt off at the clinic? <laughs> Can I tell you a story about this shirt? I actually got this shirt. Um, on a trade. I traded, I wanted this shirt so badly from somebody, I traded her another white wife beater without holes. But over the years, it's really just come apart. And I, I don't it. know if- uh, It does look Yeah, it's purpose. not gonna hang on much longer. So this might be the last time I wear it. Maybe Esther will tear it off, or Carlos. <laughs> you know, I have a family member, I'm not gonna say what, but a relative outside of my unit. Are they a- uh non-binary no but i just don't want them to like fucking sue me but i have a family member who curly sue over here <laughs> who curly don't sue me his dad wanted to have him aborted and i and but didn't and i feel like this family member of mine let's just say he's my uncle like i feel like he has not let go of this fact and mm. it's like he's carried this with him his whole life that his dad wanted him aborted what? who told him that this is information you don't <laughs> yeah. need it's not like you're like gather around children let me tell you a bedtime story about how your father wanted you to be on you're a supposed to reframe it as oh you were the surprise mm -hmm. not uh you know we wanted you gone in one of those bins those plasma bins yeah because i feel on. like that would get inside someone's head like you were the that? unwanted Wait, i never went there i was like who cares because even our friend benji was 
his mom wanted to abort Wow, him. does that explain so much. <laughs> <laughs> There's a darkness in him. He knows he's not supposed to be here. <laughs> See, so you guys are saying if you knew that you someone wanted to abort you, it would affect you? If it, The way it was framed. Like if I had a great childhood and it was not something, if, if my parents said that to me once, like we actually thought about terminating the pregnancy because this was our situation. And they said it to me once. I would be like, oh, I understand that because I'm an adult and yeah. I understand how things can be hard. But if every day that you were like, oh, you were the mistake every fucking day of my no, life. No, that's not even what we're talking about. Like, because I, I just have always been like, grow up and get over it. Like, I feel like this has like made this person crazy their whole life. I, am I wrong though? Like, would it? I, the, as a daughter of someone who was adopted, yeah. the abandonment issues that come with being adopted, I would assume you maybe get some of the abandonment issues of someone saying, I literally didn't want you here. <laughs> yeah. Was his dad like, I made a mistake. I'm so glad you're here. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know the insides of all of it. So it's hard to say like- Don't say insides. Oh, sorry. No. Her insides have been scooped. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my fault. <laughs> you got gutted. I got gutted. And then I went to the acupuncturist today. Yeah. And she goes, and she's this like really beautiful, like older Russian lady. And I like her a lot. And she's, she's like, oh, you're going to be such a good mother. She goes, when are you thinking of like inseminating? And I was like, oh, in like a couple of years. And she goes, oh, that long? And I'm like, I just spent all this money to do all this thing. So I didn't have to have this pressure on me, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a talk with her. Next but, but I do want to ask you about that, though. Now that you know that there is an embryo, like, does it make you kind of curious to see like, wow, I could get that done today if I wanted to? It's not that but i did feel i started to feel like maternal over my eggs like i wanted to sit on them and hatch them like i, I want to sit on like, them and hatch them I see felt... you're making me wish it was actually eggs that sounds so fun <laughs> you're so weird <laughs> <laughs> you're so weird <laughs> how like you could bounce on them eggs yeah and, like you can like see them and hold them while they're growing you know what here's what i'll say <laughs> esther. <laughs> esther you have a point did you keep your abortion by the way <laughs> no. i feel like you're stroking your abortion <laughs> 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 right <laughs> No, but I think like when I was pregnant for three months for no reason, I... <laughs> Do you want to explain your type of what it was? Oh my God. I Well, okay. I I talk about it in my stand-up right. and I feel like I'll save it for that. Okay. Like, but it was traumatizing as fuck because when I got... After they do the abortion, they tell you... Um, they test it and then they tell you like what what was wrong and i had this like super rare kind of miscarriage where they were based it was so fucking traumatizing they're like so now that you know you know it didn't work out also you can't try again for six months to a year and you might it might develop into cancer they were literally yeah. like you might need chemo because it was it was a called a partial molar pregnancy which annie is obsessed with <laughs> just so, anyone i know to have a, a Pregnancy called molar. <laughs> but like, well, you grew something kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, of the biggest hyper, one of the bigger hypochondriacs I know to be like, it could turn into cancer. But you handled it well. I, it's like almost when that things are that traumatic, you just, there's nothing else. But survive. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think, who was I talking to? Someone I was talking to was like, I think Esther had an ego death from weed. Like <laughs> usually people do like strong hallucinogens to like, are you or sure the, it wasn't the NyQuil or the DayQuil? Or I will say I do think there's truth to like going through something traumatic and you just come out of it a different person. And I feel like that's what the miscarriage really did for me. And like I look at it like I learned that I can get pregnant if I want to. Yeah. Like I because before that I didn't know if I was going to be able to because for some reason my mom always told me that I was going to have a hard time which is really My weird. mom too. Very weird thing for moms to do. What? I wonder where that comes from. I wonder if they're just trying to scare us into doing it. That's what it must be. <laughs> You're speechless. <laughs> my mom said well my mom said to me it, it was actually funny she was just like well, I just thought you were like such a slut, like you would have been pregnant by now. <laughs> just so funny. For me, I think it's because my dad's mom struggled to get pregnant. Yeah. And that's why it's kind of rare for his generation that he's a only child Yeah, because they struggled. But like for me, I just look at it like I learned that it's easy to get pregnant if I want to and I'll do it again when I want to. But I'm not necessarily ready again. 
You learned that you could miscarry on. <laughs> <laughs> Keep calm and miscarry Keep calm on. and miscarry on. And also how common miscarriages are. Yeah. Did you feel like, was there any sort of like relief of like the fear of motherhood when it happened? No, actually, I think later, but you guys, I cannot stress to you enough how traumatic it was mm. to be told that moment where they're like, so mm. it's not it's not there anymore yeah. like i just i remember like the mask i was wearing i had to throw it away because i it was so full of snot and tears mm. and yeah it just was really like i'm comfortable talking about it now like almost a year mm. later because i'm through it i mm. a drug addict now just kidding <laughs> uh but you know I, i've worked through it and i'm still working through it but i'm not going to deny like especially to people who've experienced that like yeah. that initial trauma Cause you'd gotten yourself like oh. into the yeah. You hole. think you're you've been you like you said yeah, you, you feel feeling like maternal, maternal over your, your freaking yeah. eggs. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. So you get it, and you've had several abortions. Several. And so let's move to the other area <laughs> of <laughs> female several. reproductive. Health. We are we were such a good mix of different <laughs> <laughs> options. Um, but that's exactly what this whole Roe versus Wade thing is. Like it's not. An abortion isn't one thing. It's 50 different, yeah. you know, situations and circumstances and yeah. joys and sadness and everything. Like, it is such a complex thing that you can't just say, oh, well, abortions are bad. For who? For what? Yeah. For By when? the way, if I didn't get an abortion when I had my miscarriage, which is a which some people don't need it, like the tissue will just go mm -hmm. away. But if I hadn't, it would have literally turned into cancer right. in my fucking so uterus. Crazy. I would have had yeah. cancer if I didn't get it sucked out. Mm -hmm. Guys. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? And also it's just like, there's no, it's like, it's so judgmental to like, this, you don't wait, know what, what anyone's if, reason, what? What if the Supreme Court is like, so we did take that into consideration that Esther would have had cancer mm -hmm. and we, we approved. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, attachment, fatigue, and more. I've had all of those. We're all like acting them out right now, by yeah. the way. <laughs> Esther's like half asleep. <laughs> Most of us just associate burnout with work, but that's not always the case. You can be burned out for more than just your work. We were just in a global pandemic. We were just all mm -hmm. in a very weird, traumatizing thing that everyone went through. There's a war going on. There's crazy things. There's... Uh, Supreme Court threatening to overturn stuff. A lot is happening right now. Yeah, and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. And talking with someone can really help you figure out what is causing all the stresses in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And I had therapy two days ago, and guess what? I did not want to see anyone well, I called Annie right before therapy. <laughs> and I, I just, it was just a really bad day for me. And I didn't want to see anyone on video, not in person. And I had the best session over the phone. And that's an option for you. Was it because help. I annoyed you so much on FaceTime <laughs> that you were like, I'm done with like seeing people? <laughs> Sounds like we all had a rough week last week. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. This podcast is sponsored by Ben. Better help and, and it's all love. And <laughs> Trash <laughs> Tuesday listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash trash Tuesday. Let's talk about liquid death because it's my favorite drink. And you would be. I think you might be dead without it because you did need something like to make you feel cool. I really to did. To drink water. This, Thank you. This green is my favorite color. I, I don't care. It, it is also so freaking cool looking, this green in this tall boy can. This, and this is a is new severed lime flavor. Severed is so good too. You know, I like fake blood. I like severed things. The it's new cool. flavors are delicious. There's mango chainsaw, severed lime, and bury it alive. I know Dave is obsessed with the berry. I like the lime. Um, and all of the flavors have three grams of agave nectar in them. So they're kind of like a different take on sparkling water with flavor. Like they have a little bit of sweetener, but not a lot. It's They're really, really good. Yeah. And I like the way agave sweetens things. It's very different from just 
plain old sugar. It's a we don't do sugar, okay? Come <laughs> at us. Well, agave is sugar, but <laughs> it is. But we but... don't do sh we don't do cane sugar, right? <laughs> we don't do white sugar shit, okay? And why is so. it called liquid death? Because they're bringing death to plastic, and ten percent of the profits from every can sold are donated to help kill plastic pollution. Love oh. that. And what so I like sweet. about these guys is, you know, I, I, I don't drink often. So sometimes I don't know what to do with my hands at a party, at a social, what they, do they call them gatherings? <laughs> uh, at a social event. And I like having this cool freaking can to just. I agree. Well, we I, know if you don't have the can, what else are you going to do with your hands? <laughs> no, I always. Oh, it's dangerous. <laughs> but, uh, when you said that, my mouth did this. They might just, <laughs> her hands might just slip onto a dick. Um I love sparkling water. I feel the same way. And I always want sparkling water with me. And I always want my liquid death with me when I'm out. You guys can get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash trash. That's liquiddeath.com slash trash. Or find Liquid Death at 7-Eleven, Target, Albertson, Safeway, or Amazon. But we say go to liquiddeath.com slash trash so they know that our fans fucking love it and us. One of our reasons here. <laughs> That's I think we should submit you then. We should submit <laughs> it, your story. It is a little frustrating because I remember, like, I am a little embarrassed of how rah rah I went during the women's movement, but Why? I do feel more about because it was, I was triggered. It wasn't like, it was not a grounded thing. And it's okay to be triggered, but I was just like the most like raped and raw I'd ever been. And it was just like, it just felt, I just felt so like, I was just very unhinged, which is okay to be and and whatever, but. I just, I, honestly, the main thing I'm embarrassed about was the pussy. The hat, hat. the it's hat, that's what I it's gathered, hat. yeah. It's really the hat. Yeah. It's just, they tricked us, they tricked us, they tricked us. Whoever if, made that, it was not. That's what I feel. I think that if you had just gone and walked without the regular, hat, you would have just been fine. So fucking, You're so traumatized by the I, hat. It's just so, it was Are sheets. there pictures? I could find a picture. Well, I'll then let's burn them so you don't feel traumatized oh, by the memory. Oh, yeah, maybe we won't post it. You don't get to see my pussy hat picture. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos was all psyched. He's like, oh, I get to put a picture in. Um, but I remember my guy friends being like, oh, abortion's not going to be overturned. Like, mm -hmm. da, da, da. And I was like, how do you know? Right. How do you know? Yeah, I will admit, though, that I would have been on their side and been like, of course abortion won't be overturned. Right. Are you crazy? You, and ju you just think that it's uh, we're so far past that. That there's no way that we can regress as a society in that way, because you know, like you've, I've, I've used Planned Parenthood, you know, like I, that's always been at my disposal, and I've always felt very safe in knowing yeah. that, like as a woman living in California, <laughs> but like, but I guess you know, it can't get to you Wait, comfortable. Did I ever tell you guys that? So when I first moved to LA and I was so broke, and I. I, I would do all my um, gyneco gynecological, what is it? Gynecological. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, that's so the embarrassing. That you... I, was, I know, it's usually humiliated. That's yeah, more embarrassing yeah. than the pussy hat. It's so bad. <laughs> you had to correct me. But I would go to Planned Parenthood frequently, and uh, they would always send you The home. nurse was hot. <laughs> she was like, give me the duck bill. They would always send you home with like a bag of condoms yeah. and I was in a committed relationship at the time and so I didn't use condoms, whatever. Uh, did he use them with the other girls? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope he did. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I'm like, how far do I want to go into that? But, I'll just... but so one day I finally went to go get my car washed and I got a detail because I had learned what detailing was at age 22. And... When I came to pick up my car, all these guys were standing outside it laughing and staring at me. And I was like, what is going on? And I get to my car and it's all cleaned out. But there's like three huge bags of condoms. <laughs> and I'm like, these guys think I'm a fucking hoe. Well, they're unused. Yeah. And also, yeah. hoes don't use condoms. <laughs> yeah, Annie. <laughs> yeah. I'm allergic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sex sucks and my vagina smells like rubber. Um, wow. Okay, wait. Have you had Planned Parenthood experiences? I've been going to Planned Parenthood since I Me was 16 too. years old. That was my spot in Santa Fe. Yeah, and they gave you that government card that yeah. gave you, you know, like mm -hmm. basically free. I always got my birth control from there. I always got my pap smears from there, yep. my checkups, my S. Anytime I needed to be tested, I used Planned Parenthood. Like, I got all my, did you guys ever do the depot shot? I no. never got the depot oh, that shot. Got me, it took my beard away for one year and then I got it for six months straight. I had my mirror. 
Honestly, I, I was think like they, anemic. I think they, they, that's like you can use that in court as a reason why you come undone. Like anyone, <laughs> like I always thought this. Like come undone. That's funny. <laughs> like I remember when Christina Aguilera. Like everyone was really like just shitting on her for putting on this weight and for not like being the the old. She was so ex- skinny. Yeah. Though. Oh my god. And then she comes out and says like she had been on the depot shot. And I'm <gasps> like, look, I think that. A lot of things can be solved. I, you know, there's a Twinkie defense. The guy who killed Harvey Milk, um, he was like, oh. He couldn't I- find milk for his Twinkies, so he <laughs> killed him. <laughs> well, his defense in court was, I ate shitty for, I ate just straight sugars for however long. And um, and it, 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 I became work? crazy from it. They called, You could pull it up. It's called Did the Twinkie defense. Um, but I don't know if he got off, but that was a defense that he used. But I think that the depot what? shot is Hester's like the- has gotten de- off to Twinkies before. I was going to say, I, for me to not know about that is a missed opportunity. <laughs> so um, so the Twinkie defense is a- is that It's is- not a recognized legal defense. Let's just- But they use that, right? But I think that the depot shot is like, I think is passable in court. It's saying, look, my f- it caused psychosis. <laughs> How did you feel on the depot shot? <laughs> I was like- Woo, I don't have my period. This is awesome. I was like, this is the shit. I love the shot. And then I got off and I was so upset. I mean, <laughs> six months, just no underwear left, no couches <laughs> left unbled on. Even on the lowest dose of birth control, I oh, almost got into a car accident for like trying to get to a gas station to get ice cream. Was that, when you're doing this, <laughs> was that when you were doing whiskey ginger? Yeah. No, oh, when I when Wait. I did no, I was that was bad friends when I drove down the stairs. <laughs> if you saw the stairs, you all would have done the same thing. You'd you'd get it. I know it, it's at we the same saw the stairs as a picture. Ginger. Yeah, we saw. I saw the stairs, Esther. It doesn't look like a a driveway at all. My most sexist moments are when I see a car abandoned half on and half off of a curb. You think I it's always Bobby? go a woman. Or Bobby. Or Bobby. Right. Bobby. Two options there. Sexist and racist. Sexist Either way. <laughs> um, my Planned Parenthood memory, though, is I had uh, this woman go. She was like giving me a cervical exam. And she goes, oh, do you want this skin tag removed? And I went, skin tag? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, you have like a skin tag. It was like a, like a, I guess a hemorrhoid. It turned into like a mole on my yeah. asshole. And I go, what? I was like so embarrassed. I was like, I have a skin tag on my ass. And she was like, yeah, why don't you come in next week to get it removed? I go, okay. I come in next week. They go, oh, she doesn't work here anymore. And then I was like, oh, okay. So who's going to? And they're like, we don't do that here. And I was like, wait, you can't just like tell me I have a skin tag on my asshole and then leave it there. And then leave the country. And then she's gone. She escaped. She's like, I don't want to touch this. (laughs) But eventually I got it removed. But it was a whole surgery. Did you get, but it wasn't a hemorrhoidectomy? Is that what they call it? Because those are painful as shit. No, I don't think it was. It was just they removed it and then they sewed it up and I had, but I had to wear, I remember I went in and the guy, it was a valet at the hospital and he was hitting on me in the way and I was, wore leggings. I didn't know this was going to be a thing. I thought it was going to be like, get out of here, girl. So I go, I valet my car and the guy's like, damn, he's like, look, checking me out. I go in, I get the surgery. They literally put me in a surgical, like it's a whole like operating room. And then they're like, all right, you have to wear this ice pack out. So I had this giant diaper yeah i looked like i had a dick like on both sides of my body and i went out and the guy was like oh da- oh damn and you could hear him get so upset when he saw my protruding asshole oh no because i know those things are really really painful like they say hemorrhoidectomies are as painful as like i think a gunshot to your calf <laughs> i don't really? know how they're able to compare oh the two God. but <laughs> that person's had a rough life <laughs> also why does a gunshot to the calf sound good gsw oh, baby like you want one yeah they're like bb gun i'll do it my calves are sore all the time <laughs> I want that. she's a walk walk walker i tried to talk to esther the other day she goes i can't talk i'm walking i was like you're the only person in the world that's when you talk is when you're on a walk she's like it's hard i'm like oh my god <laughs> it really is i can do one thing i cannot one. believe it i'm like this bitch and i also always have people hitting me up to join me on my walks and i'm like no like <laughs> I, I can't i can't do it anymore like, your business now yeah like my well no my walks are like mental health like they're for do you, you listen to music or do you just think i do it all but i just have to be like i'll listen to a podcast i'll listen to music i'll just silently what podcast do you listen to trash tuesday <laughs> sadly <laughs> that's true they're for you and for you only i want to ask you guys some this question though 
Do you guys ever feel like your best ideas, like you come to life and all of a sudden you have 50 ideas when you're in the shower? Yeah. Why is that? Is it the hot water like fully dilating our fucking blood vessels? I think maybe you're like, kind of like shutting yourself off to the outside world or something. I don't well, know. I have a trash tank idea then. What okay. is it? But can I just interject yeah. that? You, I will have to be honest that I have not taken a shower in like three years. <laughs> so I don't relate. Why don't you try and see if your brain comes alive? Maybe I will. There is something about, I don't know what it is. It's like. What? Shit, does it hurt you? You're like, oh. I just take, <laughs> I take baths and I even have like a little shower head in my bathtub. Oh, now. I bet you do. So I just sit under I it. I bet you do. I bet you would. No, I've never done that. Really? What? Yeah. That's the only reason to have a detachable shower. Yeah. I, and I've always had one. I've never. That does not. You are just. I always think I'm going to peak in my elder years. You are really ready for it. <laughs> Like, you are ready for, like, a geriatric bathroom now. Oh, yeah. You are just setting yourself up to just be ba sponge bath. It's true. Bathed. It's true. Wait, okay, I want to hear your trash tank idea. I think, okay, so when I'm in the shower and I have all these swirling ideas in my head, I never have a notepad. Mm -hmm. I never have the phone ready. Like, I want to make 50 phone calls, and I just want to spew ideas all... So I want to create a bathroom board, a shower board, basically, where when you have when you're having those ideas in the shower... It's a waterproof area to write down all the ideas. I Does it exist? Look yeah, it there's something called, I think it's called Aqua Notes that I got for Dave once. Aqua Notes? Yeah, it's like a notepad and a special pencil that like can get wet and you put it up in the shower. Oh, fuck. They beat us. They beat me. But I actually like the idea of a board. And I even think that it should just be like a big decal. They do have it already. Yeah. <gasps> I... But honestly, it sucked. It Doesn't didn't, it hurt? I didn't like it. Doesn't it hurt to realize you're yes, a hack? Yes, no more great ideas down the drain. That's what that says. Doesn't that hurt? I'm though? a hack. <laughs> no, one time I had a joke and I, I looked it up online and you could Google image it. It was a meme. Uh, that, that, that happens. happens. Uh, that happens. A meme? Yeah, all weather EDC pocket memo notebook, waterproof. Of course they would have a waterproof memo No, I think memo your idea book. is better. I like a board. It's dead, Esther. It's down the drain. Okay. Esther's trying so hard to, to be To keep supportive. trash tank alive. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Whitney Cummings posts a picture of herself. She goes, roast me. Esther goes, I can't. You're flawless. Literally, ah. that's what I felt. I li and, and you know what else my strategy was? All those people will roast her and then she'll be down on, her, on herself and... She'll have nowhere to go but me. <laughs> People were tagging me like, get her, Annie. I go, I can't give it to her when she wants also, it. <laughs> also, that picture that she posted of herself, quite possibly the tannest she's ever looked. So beautiful. The most gorgeous she's ever Perfect looked. Perfect hair. Right. So you're not wrong. Yeah. In that photograph, this she's hair? flawless. Look, I was look just speaking my heart. I'm like, look at her. I love she her. She does love a pink and red together. That's so terrible to do. I would never tell people to roast me. Really? No, roast me. Give me compliments. <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna post this. I only want on my birthday. I always say that in lieu of presents, compliment, compliment me, but also send me presents to the comedy store. One year, I had like a really small group of people over for my birthday, and were they short or just not? Other people? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I made us all sit in a circle, and everyone had to go and take a turn telling them telling their favorite memory of me. It was my favorite birthday did ever. Did you was it last year? Yes. Yeah, so. How old were you? So and how then, did you announce it, Esther? Hey guys, I really just want to sit in a circle, and I want you guys to. Yeah, I was like, okay, let's all sit in a circle. And like, we did it and it was so much fun. I don't think. Did everyone else have fun or was it just you? Probably just me. <laughs> was Dave there so mad? Yes. <laughs> Stewing in a circle. Like Come a to fun. think of it, it was just me, Dave, and my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom's like, I like that it's uh, hard for you to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's my oh, I do want to shout out my mom for never applying that pressure on me ever in That's any direction awesome. at all. She's just like, if you want them, great. If you don't, I totally understand. Yeah. Like she's very like, in fact, um, she hasn't said this to me, but to my sister, she's like, don't have kids. You, you're very happy. You seem very, you know, um, you know, like good in your skin and you like your life. She's like, I get it. Don't have kids. Does your mom have more than just you two? Um, I have a sister who is adopted who's older. Uh, so it's the three of us. Um, but she comes from a family of 10. And in that family of 10, or siblings of 10, 10 siblings. 
in that family, there is a lot of murder and chaos. <laughs> so I kind of understand why she maybe feels like, like hey. Murderers hanging up on a cross on the Holy Week. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you have an older sister who's adopted. Old. Yes, yeah. But she was adopted when she was 12 years old. And how old were you when she was 12? I was uh, five or six. Huh. Um, Who but adopted her? Your, your... My, my family, my father did. So she has my last. That's Juliana's mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, wow. Look at Carlos. I got horny. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't horny. I was just mm. saying I also know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. He went, mm. Yeah, but I do want to shout her out for never putting that. Um, the typical pressure of being like, hey, have kids now. And I, I want to shout her out pressure. for that. That's fucking <laughs> my mom awesome. Didn't do that, but you're, oh no, you're not only child. And they already have kids. No, my mom has grandkids. My dad doesn't. But my dad is like your mom. My dad's like, I don't care. Don't, don't mm. do it. But now he wants you to have kids, right? No, he's, he he's, I, he's very he's chill about it. Yeah, he doesn't, there's no pressure. He just wants me to focus on working mm -hmm. yeah. and not let anything get in the way. And the when, when I had the miscarriage, he was like, I'm just glad you're okay. Mm -hmm. like, oh, that is sweet. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because I would have sucked if everyone was like, we're so, like, you're like, I don't want to deal with your sadness too. Yeah, which I feel like ultimately that's unavoidable. Yeah. You yeah. are a hard patient though, I will say. Oh, but. <laughs> What? You are such a hard patient. Esther, you just got uh this you got your um DNC, right? Yeah. You got this procedure done. Do not do anything strenuous. Don't travel. Don't walk around airports. This is your time to be in a wheelchair of all the times. <laughs> I was then, so determined to not let having to get that procedure affect my plans with my best friend for her birthday. And I just, I fucked up. And you that, are so obsessed with Christina. It's I crazy. know. <laughs> Does she feel this way about you? No. <laughs> <laughs> she makes it very clear. Not at all. <laughs> but yeah, I had a really hard time after that. Yeah. I that. think it took like four people, four of us to be like, you are not going anywhere. And then you still did. Yeah. It was you and Dave were so scary to me at that time. You guys were mad at me. And I was like, off in a different place mentally. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that was, I'm sure I've talked about this before, but like that night where I overdid it and then had the worst pains of my life, like I was on the bathroom floor in the basement and I was like, it was the first time in my life where I was like, I'm okay to die. I was like, I can die here this right now. This was your ego death. This Whoa. was it. Mm. I was like, I'm in so much pain and I'm on the floor of the basement bathroom. I was like, this is the, I can go out here and that's okay. I was really comfortable with that. But um, then I took a hydrocodone in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, it can be really hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt, and sometimes it can be even harder to ask for help, and that's where Upstart comes in. You guys, saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps towards financial independence, but the interest month after month can feel like you're in a never-ending hamster wheel. I know that pain. I it, it is just one of the most stressful things, and I don't want to have to think about. This is why Upstart, I think everyone should have. Yes. And Up my financial advisor does tell me to do it. Yes. Esther. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. And Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. It's like a one stop shop for all of your things to get paid off basically with so a really you don't, good yeah you don't have to be like making sure that you made all of your payments on everything and by the way it's hard enough for me to just keep my credit cards <laughs> and my purse in general so <laughs> i uh, threw one in the trash and started getting charged at a golf place so <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I what I really like too is that you can check your rate in minutes for loans between one thousand to fifty thousand dollars without impacting your credit score. Don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash Tuesday. That's upstart.com slash Tuesday to check your rate today. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Tuesday. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Esther the druggie. <laughs> it's an ego rebirth. <laughs> she <laughs> right is that back. Moment. <laughs> but so, uh, and that's, now, uh, you didn't call it a DNC, right? It that is, is what yeah. it's called. D, yeah. yeah. The DNC is also the, the DNC, right? The Democratic, the Democratic National Convention. Oh, Convention. yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I was just, I was like, Sam Tripoli was in my head. That's what you call a, an abortion. An abortion. Pretty much. So, uh, okay, yeah. so an abortion is that painful and horrific, and people are like, people are just getting it for fun. <laughs> yeah. Just enjoying a good old. And even when I talk about my abortions, I talk about it in a very like dismissive, oh, it was yeah. easy. I felt relieved. But that's just not the case. Like, yeah. I was, my last abortion, I was emotionally miserable. I was physically miserable you're bleeding for like a whole fucking month like it's you know it's a very hard decision i know i i, I feel this pressure to talk about it like hey guys it's nothing because that's yeah. what i want to promote right. yeah but it is very hard on a woman and those choices are so taxing it's really hard it's sad and depressing yeah. either it's like so because i just was so angry that i had to deal with it and that it yeah. was getting in my way and you just feel like helpless yeah but yeah it, you guys that's a good point it fucking sucks <laughs> and dude guys, that abortion pill, blow <laughs> that abortion pill hurt like the cramps that i got from that pill i was doubled over and on top of that, when I went for a recheck, because when you take the abortion pill, they're like, hey, you have to check whether yeah. or not it, you know, the, the pregnancy was terminated. And it wasn't. That happened to my friend. What? She had a double. Yeah. She had a double so I had to get it, it. Yeah. then. Yep. I had to get the DNC. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> you know, it's not something. Maybe I've, you know, I've made the mistake of being very like, ah, ha, ha, I've terminated pregnancies. So I've killed babies. But they're no, just like, also that's how having, I cope. Yeah, that's, yeah, obviously, just, yeah. that's clearly how all three of us cope. Yeah. By the way. I try to Dwayne, make it like yeah. light and funny, but no, there was nothing light and funny about it. Like it hurt my heart deeply. I actually was going through an old Finsta account I had and um, which has Such always had two followers dave and carlos for the last 10 years <laughs> and i saw an old post from when i was really depressed this was unrelated to the miscarriage this was january of 2020 i think we all remember how bad i was and i saw on this this dramatic post i wrote about how sad i was i wrote um if you see me crying please just laugh at me that helps me like i was telling dave and carlos like i want to be laughed at mm. because laughter is like the yeah. it's so comforting to me yeah. I don't know. I just wanted to like highlight that if other people out there are like us. Did you, you liked my tweet at you today? That was so funny. <laughs> I saw her. Oh my God. Wait, what did you tweet at her? She's... I have a, my hot Swedish neighbor waved at me. Yeah. And you wrote, let's have her on the podcast, which I'm so glad you knew it was a woman. <laughs> oh, was it though? Yeah. Oh, of She's course. She's fucking so hot. And then Annie wrote, I wrote, is it a, is your neighbor a red fish? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you just twisting them in your mouth. <laughs> oh God, no! She. I know how. I know how to do Esther humor. Yeah. <laughs> Is this banana break time? Yeah. Do you think that um, when we get older, and perhaps let's suppose Dave has left you? Todd has left you. Bobby has left me. It doesn't really matter. Do you think we could just <laughs> resort to being in an old lady thruple together? A million percent. Yeah, we could we do would that just be eating them. each other's pussies out? We can do that with our boyfriends. Mm, that's a good point. You know all I want is like to a never-ending yes. sleepover. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to live with friends so bad. And in fact, I would... Don't even get, don't do this with me because I will 100% commit right now to literally just renting a house for a month and living in it. Like we all live together. We have a month and it's so much fun. Like why? You know what we should do, Annie? Annie, you know what we should do? I don't Esther, care Esther, careful is. what you wish for because I think this is what Annie are gonna, and I are going to do because we're trying to like just bring you out of your um, gay shell. We're going to force you to eat us out every fucking night. <laughs> every night. We're going to be like, you don't have a choice. I don't care if your neck we'll hurts today. We'll give you her in the morning because we know she washes more than me. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird, but like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't get anything in return. You just have to eat us out. Every freaking day, and you're gonna be like my neck muscles, and I'm like oh I haven't God. come yet, Esther. She's gonna be so annoying about <laughs> and it. And you have to make us come. To, it's too completion. She's gonna make us fuck her mouth with our pussies. I <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to skull fuck her with our badges. <laughs> that is very interesting to me. That concept. Do you ever like when you're masturbating? Do you think about really just like spreading it and licking it? 
<laughs> or is it more like playing with boobs and grabbing ass? I do want to know the question. We know the there's not a this. guy. We know there's not a guy there. That's so a good question. Just... What do you think of Esther? You guys. I'll tell you what makes I me come. You guys, it's you. <laughs> That's what it is. What? What makes like oh when God. I'm already super horny, the idea that someone is like, I like being spread open with fingers. <laughs> Not by a penis. Why? I like how you make it look like it's an iPhone. Like they're spreading mm. it open. <laughs> like, so, also, it's this big. <laughs> so, like, let's say for instance, they're stretchy. If, <laughs> if someone's already like, say, fingering me, but like to just spread it open, I like the sensation of that. I think about that when I masturbate. I um um I think about being fucked from behind and then being my ass cheeks completely being spread. You would not have liked having that skin tag. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but see, but, but what do you think about? Like, what finally, what's the last thing you think about that really gets you there? I'm that, I don't, first of all, it's always changing, you know, She's I'm so always nervous. evolving. <laughs> Things are always different. All right, you can either do this or eat Beilut. Do we have Beilut for her? We're like, <laughs> Beilut. It's Beilut. Like, it's like, it's <laughs> I love you living. saying Beilut. I, I, I do what you do, the opposite. I just white up your words. I really do like, it's way cuter. It sounds way cuter. What is Balut that? Balut is um, um, fertilized duck egg. Oh, that. It, it's, it's delicious, but it has the feathers. It depends what stage it's in. Oh, but yeah. Jules eats What? Yeah, you yeah. eat the feathers. Yeah. And... <laughs> there it is. Oh, no. No? So you can either answer what you think like, about Esther. or you can eat one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we should start. We got to do a real truth or dare on this bitch. You guys, we have, next episode, tr a true truth or dare with okay. some nasty shit, okay? Oh, my okay. God. What or maybe on the live. <laughs> oh, that is so repulsive to me. That is making me vegan again. Oh, oh. I yeah. was going to say something bad. Can I say it? You yeah. Can say it. Is that what a molar pregnancy looks like? <laughs> oh, that's much worse. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, my friend just got... Um, she had um, <laughs> cysts in her ovaries removed mm. recently. And when they took out the cysts, they were teratomas. They had the teeth, the hair, everything. I don't like this conversation anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that, teeth but, is where she draws the beaks and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Feathers, she was still on, <laughs> was on the fence. Feathers, I was trying to understand what was going on still. But you know how like cats, say for instance, they have tiny little like protrusions in their penises. Like they have little hooks in their penises so when they mate with a female cat it kind of sink it sinks into the pussy so it kind of latches get out yeah get away. They basically oh look it's like their tongues like dick teeth oh baby dick teeth yeah they have spikes you guys i have to talk about this i haven't been able to talk about this yet is this what Randy, your final thought when you break before you come that's what i think about, yeah. <laughs> brandy's penis is so small that mm. Mm. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos is turned on at that. No, I knew a dog with a small dick and everyone made fun of the dog and I always felt bad for the dog. I, it's like he pisses all over his stomach because the, oh. there's nowhere for it to go. It's so cute. I'll send you a picture of his penis. To I want to see. It it's actually so cute. cute. You probably want to suck it a little bit. It's like a little nipple. Well, I remember when I was looking to adopt a dog and I found this dog that was like so cute. I was just in love with it. And then when I went to go meet it at the shelter, it was so Ugly. bad. Like it would only attack and it's, I, I'll never forget, it's dick was so big. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I always love a big dog. Is I have dog a, my dog Stubbs is the sweetest dog ever. Oh, I and love Stubbs. He Stubbs just drags his dick on yeah, the Yeah, he drags his dick all around town. So there's no correlation between no, like. No, his dick is so fucking big. I would say it's bigger than Bobby's or most men that I know, actually. Oh he has God. such a big dick. Well, you just got back at Bobby for calling your pussy standard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you meant like the standard hotel. Like it was, oh, it was very classic. Chic. It's out of business now, but you know it was. <laughs> Even the downtown Stephanie one. Stephanie Sabari was in it every once in a while. Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Sabari was just sitting there for a box job. Girl. I was so jealous of the box girls. It's Wait, what's crazy. the box girl? Oh my god! At the standard hotel on Sunset Boulevard, they literally behind the check-in counter was a clear box that a hot girl would just sit in. And like on display and they would just be, be on, like their on their laptop like swinging their feet it was actually so cool and i applied and was no, i don't even think i was considered they would have all gone to jail <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> where's the kalila tattoo did it go away yet no no oh, it's no. never going away is it Eight that's fake <laughs> dave keeps bringing that up like it's just not it's, fading i feel like it's only getting darker it does look darker let me see it <gasps> This is so funny. I hope it stays. I don't care. I love it. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I 
I will be sad when it goes away. That's so funny. I um, said nuns. Nunsies. Did what? you guys see Kim Kardashian wearing Marilyn Monroe's I dress? Did. And it was right after I saw the Marilyn Monroe documentary. The the On uh, Netflix. I watched it as well. The missing tapes or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Was it good? Mm-hmm. It was to... really sad. Yeah. Like everything from her relationship with Arthur Miller. Like it just made me fucking sad. Yeah, I felt really similarly. It was a real reminder that her life was so tragic. Mm-hmm. And even though I know I do, I do think Kim is an icon, and I don't have a problem with her wearing the dress. I thought it was such a cool cultural moment. It yeah. literally brought tears to my eyes. It was so amazing and fun to like. I love that it like reignited our interest in Marilyn a little. But I will say it, it made me realize Kim's life is not tragic, and yeah. Marilyn's was so yeah. tragic, really tragic. I'm not offended by it, but I'm like, do your hair like her. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like annoying. I'm like, it doesn't look enough like Marilyn Monroe to me for it to like be a win-win, you know? But right. it was cool. I like, you know what my favorite part about it was? That there were rumors that they just hung out at Ripley's, believe it or not, before. Because that's where they got the dress from. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the idea that they were like, oh, Pete and and Kim are just on a date at Ripley's, believe it or not, I may crack up. <laughs> that is just one like of Like they're the- just going to wax museums. And I guess maybe... If you're a wax and figure. If you're early in a relationship. <laughs> you but- go through every Johnny Depp, which by the way, I'm so into the fake Johnny Depps now, now that Johnny, real Johnny Depp is just crushing it. By the way, you look like him a little. I never realized that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Imagine- His daughter is beautiful. Johnny Yep. Imagine if you were the next Captain Jack Sparrow. What a win for us. <laughs> I don't know what to say to you this. You maybe could be it because he's kind of like fumbles around and <laughs> and I look really good with eyeliner. Maybe high like that. Yeah. Um, we'll I have dreads. to say something really that I am scared to admit. But when I listen to some of the Johnny Depp trial, I a little bit related to Amber Heard, and I want you to hear me out. <clears throat> you want <clears throat> us to Amber hear you? It's very like first of all. My take on these kinds of relationships is that, like, it's usually it takes two to tango. Like, I don't think there's ever typically one. I mean, sure, there I can't I shouldn't speak generally, but like it seems to me in this situation, like it takes two to tango. And like they were in a toxic thing that they had together. But the thing, first of all, I'm not that kind of person, like the yelling and whatever she was doing that was abusive. No, not at all. I've seen her yell at you a little bit, and you were like, "Can you believe what happened?" I've like, never been hit. Have you? <laughs> never. She been was hit. just like the story. She wagged her finger in my face. I'm like, "Wow, she's never been hit." <laughs> <laughs> but oh my god! The thing that I related <laughs> nice. to was when they would get into fights. He would leave the room, and she would go crazy, and mm. that is such a trigger for me. Like feeling abandoned i just lose my ability to now think imagine your dad wanted you aborted how would you feel <laughs> bitch <laughs> how would you feel i'd be like well i made it here i'm fine no you're so full of shit i swear i stand by that it, because i was also conceived on like a whim yeah. i was not conceived out of like people trying and wanting it was more like my mom wanted to move into his house and <laughs> oh my god you are your mother's daughter yes thank you um but do you guys know what i'm saying yeah. like when you with the amber heard stuff um, I, I've done this in previous relationships where I feel like I wasn't like it was just toxic altogether where if the person would leave the room, I couldn't deal with that person leaving the room. So I would leave the house like I had to one up the leaving and one Ooh, up I the like abandonment that. because <laughs> I was so hurt in that moment of them not wanting to solve something with me. I don't do that anymore, obviously. Like, yeah. But when I was in my young 20s and just very like confused about like how to like cope with difficulties in relationships, I would do that. I'd be like, as soon as they'd be like, I can't talk right now. I'd be like, well, that's it. Start. I would start packing my stuff. Yeah. And then I would just yes. leave the house and then ghost them. I've packed. <laughs> because I was just too hurt by that one move so i'm gonna one up their move and that's so fucked up of me to have done that but i that feeling is what i had yeah and i can hear it in her voice and in the things that she's saying in those tapes that are so hard to listen to um but she so clearly she's so desperate for him to just like say i'm here with you and i love you and it's i don't know it's sad but he's also taking care of himself in that moment absolutely of leaving, and know? i'm not it, Because the way she's acting is so 
bad that I understand why it, when you're in a situation like that, you have to just leave. That's yeah. what you have to do because otherwise they're just going to keep yelling at and you. They're shutting your bed. And... Yeah. Did you hear any of it? What are your thoughts? I honestly, I'm just reignited and really loving Johnny Depp. He's just making me laugh so much. And it's annoying mm -hmm. if someone's like smirking in your face and stuff if yeah. you're in a fight. Like I'm sure he was doing that and I could see that making driving her crazy and stuff. I don't know. I'm trying to like, it's hard because I am really trying to stay out of people's business because I feel like every time I get in people's business, it ends up being like so stressful <laughs> for me or whatever. So I've been like trying to not get in people's business. And then, so this is the most being in someone's business you can, but it is like, and I'm friends with Stan Hope and stuff who's really close with Johnny Depp and stuff. So I feel like I, I'm already on the team Johnny just in, by association. Not that I have to be or anything, but the clips I really like are when they catch her like faking her being an actress. Really? Mm. Oh yeah. I They'll seen catch that. her like she'll be like, oh. Uh -huh. Oh shit. <laughs> it's like she's a psycho, dude. Really? Yeah, she's fucking crazy. Yeah. Allegedly. 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 Who knows? We're gonna, we we gotta be know. careful on this show. Apparently. I, you know what? I just um. I'm team neither. I yeah, think I don't that want to, he's but it an is addict. weird they're doing it. It's like well, you guys are obsessed with each other still too. By the way, can you yes, imagine? Yes, I, th I actually believe they that. They seem like they're still into each other. It's like why would you still be so attached to that? Mm. Because like, there's still I drive so much houses. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because I think there's still so much unresolved yes. hatred between them that I think that they couldn't have. They couldn't be more bonded to each other in right. this moment. I think it's going to be years before they're able to shed each other off each other's systems. Yeah. And I, I'm team neither just because I don't know. Um, I, I'm sure she. She seems like she's been unhinged several times, but he's also somebody who was a very messy addict. So yeah. it's like both of you motherfuckers were messy as shit, toxic as shit. You're both adults. You couldn't figure it out. I'm yeah. team fucking neither. I'm I agree. like, you, you both deserve this. This is nasty. But it's just like, because I've been in bad relationships. Like I've had two particularly horrible relationships. And one was with this guy back in the day when I first started comedy, this fat, fat, fat fuck. And oh God, he was fat. And he was like really mean to my mom. And there was like all these, it was just such a fat. And I used to really want to like one up. I would start to like stop hating him just like out of time and mm. whatever. And then I would be like, I almost want to like hang out with him to remember how much, because he would always without fail just do something horrific in front of me, like yell at his new girlfriend or something or just be like such a psycho. And I would see him at like parties and stuff and I'd just be like, you're here. And I never like gave up that. Because I just like, it was just when you see someone make your mother cry two times, it's like, Ugh. how do you like, Living I just, so but funny. I don't give a sh I never think about that guy. I don't, I'm kind of embarrassed about the whole th situation. I you would know. not even say anything to him now. Like, but I did, I was like, I, I liked hating him. It was fun hmm. to hate him. Well, there are some people, it, it, I guess it's, I will but say But I wouldn't this. have cared if he told people things about me because it would, it, people wouldn't have believed him. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. for Johnny Depp, she said all the stuff about him and then he didn't get to say the stuff about her. Right. So I think that's where there are some type of like fucking abusive types of people who just won't let it go. It's like um, in her case, she did that op-ed, right? Yeah. Where it's like it, it was already over. It was sort of like probably not the most amicable split, but it was still over. And then she just couldn't let it go. She had to write that thing and kind of like, you know, she had to win right. is what it seemed like. She had to feel that feeling of winning, writing that op-ed, saying all those things about him. But needing to that have that win is like you're still so attached. Like yes. right, right. how my other like toxic relationship that where I was not good in that relationship either. Like I really like got into the spin of it. And it's just, it's very nice to be with someone that does not act to me. I'm never really like upset and it's very nice. But when you have those people where it's like they just elevate and they love it and you're watching their face like, excitedly getting you fucking worked up that guy i don't i've worked on myself i have no interest in being near yeah. him i don't but that's the only way to do it is just like clean cut but even if you talk shit on me i'd be like i i don't know there's just like certain people where you're just like yeah i don't even care if you say anything about me but she did it so publicly i only really have one ex-boyfriend who i loathe with my every like on a really? molecular level yeah, and he was just, it took me a year and a half to figure out he was a full-blown narcissist. Was a punch through the window guy? No, no, I don't even hate him. I am. I offer him empathy and yeah. understanding because I'm like, I think that he deals with mental um, yeah. illness and stuff. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. No, but it was someone who was much older than me. The The first guy that I dated um, when I was 22, he was 38. And um, he was physically abusive he was emotionally abusive i still think that he is i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but i think he was dealing with his um, sexual identity um and we all know that 
closeted gay men can be very, very abusive. If they are you here to, to like, hit us? Don't hit us, Carlos. Why are you coming up to us right now? Carlos. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> um, but it was the first time where um, he was one of those types of guys that if I didn't completely extract myself, move far away, right. he would have just kept going and trying to like re-enter my life and trying to get a rise out of me yeah. in some way. So like I, there are people like that. And I do think that there is something about Amber Heard that made her feel like this is not resolved. I want to keep, you know, fighting. Yeah. But I, also, don't you feel like with those narcissists too, like did you ever, like with my, because I think, <laughs> I mean, I this was a troubled guy. So like I also have empathy. I mean, it's like love for all of them, but like I yeah. just don't, like it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. But I was like thinking like there was one time when we, after we broke up, I needed to go back to the house because I got locked out of where I was staying. And so I needed to go back to the house. And I went back to our place and he was there. And I wasn't like, I had completely shut him out. I wasn't mm -hmm. talking to him or anything. And so I figured out how to get my keys back. And then there was like a second and I was like, I went, I went, oh, um, how are you? I just gave like one moment and he went, oh, oh. And he did this like fake sad thing and I went, no. And then I left. I was like, absolutely not. Like I just saw him switch the, which is what I saw in Amber Heard. Whoa. Where she just switches the thing. And I'm like, I don't know if that's like a narcissistic thing or what. I don't know, but my narcissist ex-boyfriend, um, I, this is when I didn't have a lot of money and I had these really um, favorite cowboy boots that I owned. And when I asked to, well, he had told me, hey, you left your cowboy boots here. And I was like, oh, this is a decision. Do I just leave them? Yeah. Um, or do I just, do I pick them up? And I was like, fuck it. Like, I don't have the money to buy a new pair. They're my favorite. So I go over there. I do the the the, the, the far drive to pick up my cowboy boots. And then when I get there, he's like, oh, I only found one. <gasps> and then I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll take the one. Because what he was doing was, Two weeks after, he was like, oh, I found the other of one. Of course. Right? And I never picked up the second one. So I have yeah. one cowboy boot. If um, Good for you. Yeah. So I just have a left foot. I um, always say yeah. never get the thing back. There's yeah, nothing yeah. like, but you, ha you had to go to get that lesson. Like once you got there, you realize like, oh shit. Yeah. Because I'm just like, there's nothing that's like worth my peace. Right. It's too terrified to retrieve the second boot. So guys, the second boot's not worth it. Just... Fine. Sever the ties. Live if you your guys life can away. find that boot for her, you'll get free merch. <laughs> well, thank you, old sperm fox. <laughs> yes, I want to. Next time, I want to have Todd tell you guys what it was like for him to jerk off in a cup. I'm it's really excited. Really to funny. Hear that. The story is electric. You guys, please subscribe to this channel. Please comment on this video. Help us share this with friends. Like, let's grow. Let's grow, grow, grow. Why did I say that? I'm tired. She's little. She wants to grow. Mm -hmm. You should get that surgery where they get you, make you a couple more inches. Is mm -hmm. that real? Because when I was little, my dad told me about that and I thought he was just teasing me. No, no they have real. it now. What? Yeah, you can. Um, I think the the latest one on the news was some guy who was like, "Oh, I'm five seven, but tomorrow I'll be five ten. You know? Whoa! Nice. Like, just me and Carlos are freaking out. If yeah. it's only three inches, just do the dick. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who cares? What do you mean, do the dick? Just stretch your dick out, make your dick longer. It's like th three inches doesn't matter. Annie, that much. I have to tell you something. I don't have a dick. Oh, I'm not talking about, I'm saying in general, the people. <laughs> I, I will say this so though, sorry. I cannot. I have seen you naked. <laughs> I cannot decide what I prefer in bed. If I prefer a short king or a tall king or a medium, medium king. I like them all. Like when I've had, like my before Bobby, my ex was, the last guy that I dated, he was like 6'4", this yeah. big buff, you know, um, um, footy player. And then, but when I got with Bobby, it was so brand new, the stark difference of it. I loved, I had so much fun with him in bed. They I climb think. you like a tree. It's, oh, it's amazing. So I love short guys. I, I hope the, one of the, like the best, like lovers, I hate saying that, but one of the best bangs I had was this guy <laughs> who was short and skinny and he would just climb me. Hey, Esther, I don't think <laughs> that <laughs> dream can ever be realized for you. It's hard to find a guy. I think smaller than you, aside from Brad Williams, right? I know, but that's what I'm saying. But it would be a woman. That's we're not <laughs> even pretending. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you guys next week. <laughs>